Good evening, YTPC, Northeast Pipe UK here. And if you'd seen my video earlier, you'll know that I came across a bottle of the Jack Daniels Tennessee Honey. So I thought after doing the one on the Jim Beam, I thought I would do the one on this. Um, like I said earlier, I did plan on doing a sort of favourite whiskies of this year. And while I was sorting out the bottles I'd opened, I found this. So yeah, totally forgot about it. But thinking back, I do think I've got, I think I've got the Jim Beam first. And then um, I think I'd gone in and seen this on special and I grabbed it, chucked it under the tree. So, right, so here goes. Let's see what we think. Another screw top. Ah, right. Well, this one doesn't smell as honey as the Jim Beam. It's got a little bit of that sort of alcohol tint to the smell. It doesn't always mean it's going to be the same in the glass. It's a lovely golden colour. Yeah, it's not as overpowering on the sweetness as what the uh, Jim Beam is. So it reflects on the actual taste. Yeah, I think this one's got a little bit more of a kick to it. It's got a bit more, it's more whiskey than honey. But seeing that when it's going down, you're getting that sort of honey vapor coming back up and through your nose. Yeah, this one isn't as sickly sweet, but you are getting that aftertaste of honey coming through. Mm. Certainly uh, warm, you know, but it's definitely what you need on a on a night like tonight when it's uh, a bit frosty. Might be a nice one if you're mixing up a little bowl of punch. Mm. Not bad at all. Well, I'm almost out of bankers and I've had the last of the key Largo. So that's just about freed up two jars. Because I've opened a few tins recently to do some reviews, I thought I'm really going to have to try and get through some of these um, these jars of stuff that I've had for at least a year so I would clear the, clear the decks a little bit and um, like I was saying before after getting that tin off Yanez it's really made us think seriously about doing some uh, some good cellaring. I think before I do, we definitely won't have to wait and see if the uh, postal service gets a bit better. Mm. 
I don't know if I'll order the bangers again. Um, I know Phil's told us that there's a, a variant of it in the UK that's easy to get hold of, so I'll probably just stock up on some of them. Like I mentioned about the other one, these are okay as a bit of a, a bit of a novelty drink. If you're making up a like a cocktail or putting a mixer in something a little bit different, this is really not something that I would reach for. If it wasn't coming to us as a, a gift, it's not really one I would purposefully go out and grab off the shelf. But I think for a nice little change, especially when it's it's this sort of time of year, it's a bit of the silly season, you just fancy something a bit festive and different, you know, a bit of a Christmas cake in a, in a glass type thing, then, yeah, they aren't bad. So yeah, if you're like obviously a real hard-nosed serious whiskey drinker, then you wouldn't touch this with a shitty stick, so yeah, actually it's not bad. Like I say, it's not as sickly sweet as the Jim Beam. I think next time I might have to uh, do a bit of a, a bit of a double up and maybe even a a blind taste test. Get me, get me eyes cool up and see if I can decide which one is which and which one I like the most. But yeah, not bad. That warmth is certainly coming through anyway. Mm. Well, even though it's not what I would class as a whiskey. Me personally, I still prefer this and the Jim Beam over the Gentleman Jack. So yeah, it's probably a few if you've dropped your phone right now, but yes, I did not enjoy the Gentleman Jack at all. And again, it's really bringing out the tobacco flavours in this. A nice retro here. Well, I was just on Mel's Live a moment ago. I had a quick pop in just to wish him a happy birthday. So it said on Facebook that he's 60, but I didn't think he was as old as that. So I don't know. Could be wrong. Happy birthday now.
Cheers. Mm. I might actually have a top of this when I'm finished. See again, that's that's only downside I don't like about these types of drinks. And it's the same with the flavoured gins. I mean, one of our favourites is the rhubarb and ginger. Is that because they're so sweet? You, I don't think you'd think to yourself that you're actually drinking alcohol. And um, before you know it, your your cap's blown off and you're lying on the bathroom floor for four hours. So yeah, I'll take it easy with these things. But then it's like all alcohol, it should be drank reasonably, you should always take care with it. I know it sounds crazy, but with this whole coronavirus thing, I don't think I've actually drank as much alcohol since I was in my 20s. <laughs> Because I just feel like there's nothing else that you can do. I just started, you know, it's smoking these and drinking beer. So, so yeah. If the coronavirus doesn't get us, me liver will. Well, it's hump day tomorrow, and only a couple of days left before Christmas day, so I might squeeze a couple more in, never know, I've still got that Woodford reserve there, so I might try and get that one done, and then I'll try and do a, one of what was my favourite whiskey of uh, 2020. So thank you for watching, I hope wherever you are, you're safe, you're well, you're happy. Enjoy the bowl, something to drink, whether it's alcoholic or not. So I will see you all on the next one. Bye for now.